Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and today I want to talk about another Node-RED project that I'm doing for my friend. So my friend owns a CNC shop that you can see a video of here and um, he has a couple of CNC machines and he asked me, CNC lathes I think, and he asked me if it would be possible to remotely monitor how they are working, what they are doing, how many parts they are manufacturing and I said there must be something that we can do in Node-RED and uh, um, I thought maybe we can do something by looking at the consumption of the machine, measuring the consumption, and then based on the power usage, uh, figure out when the ma uh, machine is running, not running, whether it's uh, uh, doing any cycles or just idling it in, be in between parts. And I thought maybe what we can do is we can use a Shelly 3 AEM to measure the power consumption on this machine. It would be a relatively easy investment, or sorry, a cheap investment and uh, that's a, that has clamp meters. Right? That, this is a free phase uh, power consumption meter which has uh, current clamps. So it could be easy to install even for him. He doesn't need an electrician for that. And I can just keep monitoring the power consumption and then maybe some, able to figure out something. Well, this is what we have done. And actually I was able to figure out something and we can monitor how many parts this machine uses. So this video is going to be on how this, uh, uh, what we have done so far and uh, what is working at the moment. This is like phase one, release one version. And there are some, you know, new ideas, how we can improve that, how we can align it to shifts and then, you know, maybe have some displays or some other things in the future. And of course, the idea was that if we can do it in one machine, we can just port the same code with some modifications to another machines as well. And the same thing can be run on multiple machines. And this is all done with a relatively modest investment because a Shelly 3M nowadays costs about like, you know, 100 euros plus tax or VAT. So it doesn't need like a, you know, a complex industrial monitoring system to, to set up. And of course, like a Raspberry Pi and running all free software. So that's what I'm going to talk about this video. And by the way, the end result of all this is an email at the end of the day, which, well, this is already in Hungarian, but it says that this is the report for the CNC for this date. And this is when the machine started. So it was 603 and this is when the machine ended. Uh, that's when the power was cut and uh, it, has uh, it has produced this many um, parts, which is incorrect because I just realized today that uh, this part number is not getting reset at the beginning of the day. And this is how many wrong parts have been uh, manufactured. Again, this is a wrong number because of the, uh, the counter. And then everything else, so all the different events when the cycle started, the cycle ended, how you know, a new part is produced, a wrong part is produced, or there was a too long cycle between two parts, it's going to be locked in a CSV file that gets attached to the email. So this is all that what the Node-RED does. So you can see here that I have a feed. Well, it's not a feed, it's just a recording uh, from the machine shop. And this is the uh, blue CNC machine that we will be monitoring. So what I asked my friend to do is install a Shelly 3EM, which is a free phase current monitoring device, which has current clamps. And um, yeah, that just measures, uh, you know, voltage, amps, and of course calculates uh, the watts on all three phases. And I thought maybe just by looking at the overall consumption or the single phase consumption or something else, I would be able to figure something out. So what I've done in Node-RED is I, um, I query the uh, Shelly uh, device. So if you remember Shelly 3M, I made a separate video on that. Uh, if you just have the IP and slash status, it's going to give you back a JSON, which contains everything about the three phrases and all the measurement data. So that's what I'm doing. Um, uh, and I'm pushing everything into uh, converting into InfluxDB and, and storing all this information. So everything about, you know, power, power factor, current voltage, uh, the watt hours and the watt hours returned for all three phases separately. And this goes into a new bucket in Influx. So this is data that gets stored in every five seconds. And I thought I can, you know, just immediately display the results in uh, Grafana so I can understand it. So this is not required for the final solution, but I wanted to just uh, have a first look at the data. And if you look at the data, it's sort of already, you know, kind of makes sense and, and makes some sort of uh, <clears throat> Uh, will create some sort of pattern, especially if I zoom into this area, that you should be able to tell something from this pattern. So it looks fairly regular. And, and 
Well, in fact, this is what happened. So I started looking at the, the data that gets stored in uh, InfluxDB, and I could already figure out <coughs> that um, I can pretty much tell when the machine turns on. Uh, by the way, the reason we don't have any data band because when the guys leave the shop, they kill the uh, you know the power which kills the power to the Shelly as well. So when they uh, come back to the to the shop like 6 a.m., <clears throat> they turn on the machine and then the uh, CNC turns on, and then it sort of like idles. Well, it turns on uh, at I don't know some sort of standby state at 500 watts or thereabouts, and then it looks like that it idles at about in three kilowatts. Don't ask me what it takes three kilowatts to turn a CNC in idle mode, but yeah, that, that's what it does. And once it's actually uh, starts machining products or, you know, parts, then you can see that this is one cycle, this is another cycle, and in between there is a little bit of pause when the uh, finished product is, uh, I don't know, removed, obviously by a human operator. So that um, time between the parts are, are varies because it's, uh, you know, it, it depends on the operator. But uh, you can pretty much tell that these are some, you know, looks like, like regular, regular cycles. And uh, so my friend told me that one part takes about two minutes to, uh, to machine. You can see that between uh, 06955 and 061155, it looks like it's exactly, uh, you know, two minutes how long it took. So just by looking at this data, my idea was that I'm going to have a flow which is going to detect various phases in the machine. So when the machine starts up, uh, which is like here, and then it looks at whether the machine idles or not. So this is like this 2.5 you know, kilowatt um, benchmark or mark. And then anything, any consumption above that is going to be a cycle running. And between when the cycle stop, starts and stops, it's going to measure the time and there's going to be some uh, threshold. Uh, if it's between, let's say, 110 and 130 seconds, then it's considered to be a valid part. Otherwise, uh, it will be like a rejected part. So something might have happened, maybe the, you know, something got jammed and the cycle had to be stopped and then restarted. It could be still a valid part, but anyway, that's going to be flagged as uh, something, something else. And initially I looked at the total consumption, so that's the consumption of the three phases. I also started looking at the individual phases as well, because I thought maybe if there are some, you know, single phase uh, um, devices in the machine, like, I don't know, maybe a water pump or a coolant pump, something, then it would give a different curve. But it looks like that it pretty much uses the three phases um, um, in the same way. So I couldn't really tell anything by looking at the different phases. I also thought maybe if I look at the power factors, maybe, you know, different motors would have different power factors. Uh, but yeah, it, it doesn't look like that there is any significant data in the power factor. So, so I just ended up looking at the total power, power consumption and this seems to be fine. And I pretty much already explained the beginning of the flow, but I haven't mentioned one thing, which is this uh, settings. So as I said, most probably this uh, flow is going to be used in multiple machines. So the idea is that uh, all the variables are going to be stored in, a, in some, some sort of settings. And I came up with this JSON file that stores all the settings. And this information is stored in the flow variable. So if you copy the flow into a new flow for a new machine or different machines, then the two flow would work independently. So by default, I'm refreshing the uh, Shelly every five seconds, but then when the Shelly goes offline, I would um, go to a 60 second refresh interval just to see when it comes back. And then I go back to five seconds. So the five seconds is the default. Maybe I can go down to like three or two, but five seconds appears to be good enough for, uh, you know, what I need. I mean, I do understand that I'm not getting all the data that I need because I'm basically getting a snapshot of the power consumption in that exact period when I'm checking within that five second window. So it could be, you know, it could be a higher peak or lower peak. So here I'm getting a higher peak. Probably there was a higher peak here as well, but then due to the way I queried the data, I didn't get that exact peak at uh, another cycle. So based on this interval, I, uh, stipulated that basically anything about 500 watts consumption considers the machine to be on and anything lower than 2500 kilowatts 
uh, sorry, 2,500 watts is considered as the machine is idle. And if it's above, then the machine is running a cycle. And the cycle time should be between 110 and 130 seconds to consider a part valid. And uh, if the machine is idle uh, more than 30 seconds, it will create a separate message, which uh, indicates that, I don't know, the uh, guys are doing something else or lunch break or something like that. So the uh, machine is not producing part. And for each of these steps, the, uh, the flow can send telegram messages, which gets a little bit tiring after some time. So this is something that I used for debugging in the beginning because it sends messages when the, you know, the cycle starts and the stops and the new part is granted or valid or invalid part is granted. So there's a lot of information here. And then finally, at the end of the day, it generates the email. So there is recipients, there is a subject, there is a file name where the CSV file is stored that gets attached to the email. So that's pretty much it. The flow starts with an inject node, which uh, starts every second, and this function node basically decides if the Shelly is uh, responding, then uh, the refresh time is 5 seconds, and if the Shelly is not responding, then it sets it to 60 seconds uh, to make sure that I'm not uh, querying every 5 seconds when the machine is uh, off anyway. And then I create a simple HTTP request to the status uh, uh, URL uh, for the Shelly and I calculate the total and then yeah I convert the rest to uh, InfluxDB. I also create a chart in the dashboard but actually I'm not using that. So in the next three function node it basically just each of the function nodes is responsible for states so whether the machine got turned on or turned off whether the uh, idle um, uh, the machine is in idle or goes back to idle or it starts a new cycle and when this cycle completes then uh, this calculates how long the cycle was whether that's a valid part or an invalid part and each of these will send out a specific message so for example this will send a message with the topic on and the payload of this uh, machine variable uh, because in the context I keep a sorry not here in the context I create a, an object which basically keeps track of everything we, uh, on this CNC machine. So when it was turned on, when it got turned off, uh, you know, how long it was on, whether it's on, whether it's in idle mode, when the cycle started, when the cycle ended, how many parts have been counted, you know, correct parts, wrong parts, and, you know, all sorts of stuff. So this is always getting returned by this function node with a specific uh, topic, so I know what is the latest event, and then the rest of the information is already here. And uh, from this information, I, I generate telegram messages, you can see here. And I mean, the idle pretty much does the same, but it just calculates the idle time. And then, uh, of course, it, it measures when the idle started and the, when the idle ended, and it calculates the number of seconds in between. And pretty much the cycle does the same, but with, you know, cycle starts and cycle end. And, uh, yeah, it does the same. And of course, uh, then it, it checks the cycle seconds with the min and the max, just to determine whether it was a valid part or it was a wrong part. And then it sends out the appropriate messages. And all these messages are also stored here in this function node. And this basically puts all of them into a big, big message object, which is an array of all these messages. And these messages are basically the various fields, you know, columns that are uh, exported into the CSV file. And they just have a few fields, so a timestamp, a event ID or an event name, there is a message, and there is a separate field for the length of the idle um, time and the number of, uh, uh, you know, valid part produced. And this function node just stores all these messages. And when you get a message that the CNC got turned off, then it, it uh, sends all these messages out. And from these messages, uh, we prepare a report. So here we just put together what would be a file name for the CSV file uh, to be generated later. We generate the topic, the uh, sub, you know, the to, the body of the email. And uh, uh, and then this passes through this uh, array of different messages, which gets converted to a CSV file. So here I have the column headers for the CSV file. And then the output of this CSV node is a text, a CSV text, and that gets saved to a file name. 
and the file name is also converted. Uh, sorry, it's also passed by this report, by this function node, and I just had to play around with the encoding in order to get the, the you know the correct Hungarian letter shown. And once this is generated as well and the file is saved here, then I prepare the email. So I create the attachment object. I set the path to the, so it points to the file that they just got saved. It, uh, you know, generates a file name for the attachment and it sets the, uh, the body to the payload, which becomes the email payload. And then we just send out the email and that's pretty much it. And of course, wherever the cycle or the machine gets turned on and turned off, then it resets many of the values like the part counter and the wrong counter. So this is why, this is how it calculates the part generated for every single day. So this is where we are at the moment and it's keep churning out these emails at the end of the uh, shift around like, I don't know, nine or 10 o'clock in the evening. And the, uh, so far it's been working fine. So now there are, you know, some discussions of how this can be enhanced a little bit further, maybe um, account for the different shifts. So there is a shift until 2 a.m. and then there is an afternoon shift from, sorry, 2 p.m. And so maybe we can count that separately or maybe we can have a display as well in the shop so they can see, of course, how many parts they produced. Maybe that's going to encourage them to work either faster or, well, hopefully faster. So anyway, as I said, this is release one, phase one, or phase one release one of the project. And we will see how this gets, how this evolves into, you know, to add more new functionalities and more features. So I'm pretty sure this is not going to be the last video on this. Uh, hopefully this is called, well, maybe it's going to turn into a mini series, but definitely there are going to be some follow-ups on this. So if you are interested, then just, uh, you know, follow my channel and, uh, I don't know, maybe in a couple of weeks or months there will be a follow-up video for this subject. But that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.